Hello everybody, I'm happy to be here and today I want to present a study which started several years ago. We collected lecidoid lichens along an elevation gradient and wanted to know if the associated bacterial community compositions are changing along the elevation gradient and if this is caused by the environmental conditions and or by the micro or photobionts of the respective lichens. The study was carried out together with Robert Juncker from the University of Marburg, working with bacterial communities on plants, and Alexander Keller from the University of Würzburg generated the microbiome data. We collected 176 specimens along the Großglockner High Alpine Road, and the study area is located in Europe, Austria, at the province of Salzburg. It is part of the National Park Hohe Tauern. Austria's highest mountain, the Großglockner, with an altitude of 3,798 meters, is the center of the national park. We selected eight study areas along the elevational gradient with a length of about 1,400 meters. We amplified um, the nuclear ITS of the micro and photobionts and the 16S V3, V4 region of classical, a classical region for estimating um, microbial community diversity. Elevational gradients as useful tool for predictions regarding climate change. Along elevational gradients, the species composition remarkably differs, suggesting a species-specific adaptation to different environmental conditions. Additionally, microphotobiont associations in similar lichen species vary along climatic gradients. These assumptions have not only been confirmed by numerous publications, but we have also been able to prove this with recent studies focusing on Antarctic species along an elevational and latitudinal gradient. Here you can see the green crosses mark the elevational levels constantly increasing and the red triangles, the correlating annual mean temperature, constantly decreasing. Therefore, such a gradient can be used as a proxy for climate change. Unfortunately, we cannot use the annual precipitation for this in this case. For our study, we use bioclim variables from the database Chelsea. I show here five representative habitats which all have the same substrate, namely siliceous rock. The four lower areas from 1,160 to 1,900 meters above sea level are all below tree line and intensively, intensively used as livestock pastures, which is associated with a quite high nitrogen impact. The area at Hexenküche is an intermediate habitat just below the tree line and partially covered with Pinus mugu and some occasional large tree. The grazing as well as the nitrogen impact is lower. The high areas are covered with soil grass and ground covering lichens such as Psora decipiens, Flavocetraria nivalis, Cetraria islandica, Cladonia rangiferina, and many more. The impact of grazing livestock is very low, and therefore these are the most natural habitats. Hochtor, the highest area, is more exposed, and therefore the plant's cover is not as rich as at the lower and more protected areas. Anyway, our study objects, the Saxiculus letidus lichens are unaffected by this and cover the surfaces of the undisturbed rocks. Our study system comprises one of the most successful organism groups in extreme habitats in polar and high elevated areas like the Austrian Alps and form diverse communities and rocks and on, on rocks and boulders. In general, lichen growth, abundance and diversity are expected to be negatively affected by climatic changes. Consequently, lichens represent excellent bioindicators because of their sensitive responses to environmental changes. This cosmopolitan lichen group is abundant and therefore can serve as a valuable model system to record diversity and composition along climatic gradients worldwide. Our in our study area, altogether 19 microbion species were identified and the most common ones were species of the genera Lecidea, Porpidia and Lecidella. 
By default, to be on, altogether 11 Tribuxia and 8 Asterochloris OTUs were identified. The most common OTUs were A2 from the Arboricula gigantea clade, I1 from the Impressa gelatinosa clade, and S2 from the Simplex, Letraria, and Jamesiae clade. We focused on the most common species and OTUs with an abundance greater than 7. From a total of 176 specimens, 148 are included in the group of the most common microbions. The largest group was formed by 57 specimens of the species clade Lecidia lapicida, and the complex formed by Parbidia macrocrapa consists of 33. 152 photobiont OTUs were formed by A2 with 19, I1 with 21, and the by far most dominant group, S2, consists of 112 specimens. Lecidea lapicida, Porpidia macrocarpa, Tribuxi I1, and S2 occurred in all habitats. We composed for every area a bipartite network and generated the values for the network level index for complementary specialization H2 prime. It describes the degree of specialization or partitioning among two parties, parties in our case micro and photobionts, and is useful for comparison across different interaction webs. The value ranges from zero generalist to one specialist. The interaction network analysis revealed a peak for H2 prime of the micro and photobiont interactions in the last third of the gradient. Such mid-domain effects are well known for species richness along gradients, but also for specialization. Generalized interaction networks as those found in lower elevations suggest that species have redundant ecological roles, which increases community stability and resilience to disturbances. Our preliminary results suggest that lichen communities in mid to high elevations are more sensitive to environmental ch changes such as climate warming. Anyway, further sampling is required to confirm this and therefore we plan to do a more comprehensive study including also southern hemisphere specimen along a latitudinal gradient and enlarge their sampling along the elevational gradient. The results of the associated microbiomes show that Acetobacteriaceae dominate the bacterial communities, which is most probably caused by the silicate substrate. They present strictly aerobic chemoorganotrophic bacteria that are able to carry out a great variety of incomplete oxidations, nitrogen, nitrogen fixation, and occur on acidic substrate. The community composing com Composition comprising also mainly representatives of acetobacteria, which oxidize, oxidize sugars and acquire nutrients from the environment, Armatimonotaceae, Sphingomonotaceae, which use a wide range of carbon sources, and Planktomycetaceae, and many more. The distance-based redundancy analysis revealed that bacterial community composition significantly varies along sites, suggesting a strong response of bacteria to the environment. The Shannon diversity of the bacterial community composition varies also significantly. Interestingly, the high elevated areas at Hexenküche and Hochtor seem to have similar bacterial community composition, and the lowest area at Verleiten, and the second highest area Fuscher Wegscheide as well, which is rather surprising. Interestingly, the species composition of the microbions is not similar in these two areas. Area 3 at the Schupferhochalm has the broadest range of diversity. This is an interesting area because it is highly impacted by nitrogen due to a barn for cattle, and classically nitrogen-affine plants such as the Rumex alpina were abundant in contrast to all other areas. It has also the highest microbiont diversity. Here you can see the bacterial composition was also strongly influenced by the identity of the microbiont species and photobiont OTUs. Interestingly, 
The two Lecidea lapicida clades have a similar bacterial community composition as well as Parpidia 1 and Lecidea promiscens. And here is the most abundant OTU S2. Now I want to conclude the results. Uh, complementary specialization H2 prime of micro and photobionts shows a mid-domain effect, su suggesting that lichen communities with intermediate to more extreme climate conditions are more sensitive to environmental changes, such as climate warming. Lichen-associated bacterial communities significantly vary along sites, suggesting a strong response of bacteria to the environment and also strongly in, and are also strongly influenced by the identity of the microbiont species and photobiont OTUs. And finally, we want to establish certain lichens as bioindicators for varying climate conditions, including the associations of micro and photobionts and bacterial communities. With that, I want to thank Roman Türk, um, who helped with the species identification, and Anne-Marie Zimmermann, who helped with collecting the specimens and the sequencing. The project was funded by the Glockner Ökofonds 27 and Land Salzburg 2016. Thank you very much for your interest, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Mm -hmm.